Hello and welcome to this lecture on Introduction to Medical Terminology. This is Dr. Stewart and I'll be guiding you through this topic. So let's get started. When you look at medical terms, you may think you're looking at another language. In fact, you often are. Many medical terms are made of Greek and Latin parts. To help you understand this new language, you need to learn the basic rules for building terms. Knowing how to put words together and build them from their parts is a lot like completing a puzzle or playing with Legos. There are thousands of medical terms and it is nearly impossible to memorize all of them. A better approach is to learn the various word parts and know how to analyze them. We will study four word parts in this course. Word roots, combining vowels, prefixes, and suffixes. In general, the word parts introduced on the previous slide are used to make a medical term. The word root is the fundamental meaning of the term. Prefixes and suffixes modify the word root. Combining vowels are placed between word parts to make medical terms easier to pronounce. While these are the basic rules for using word parts, remember that there are always exceptions to every rule. We will discuss these as we come to them. To help you get a sense of the word parts, let's look at some examples of how medical terms are built. We will use the same root for each term. Pay attention to the ways the different parts change this root. Cardi is the word root in the term cardiogram. A cardiogram is a record of the heart. Notice that the word root is the foundation of this term. Peri is the prefix in the term pericardium. Pericardium means around the heart. You can see here that the prefix is found at the beginning of the word. Itis is the suffix in the term carditis, which means inflammation of the heart. As this term shows, the suffix is found at the end of the word. Finally, the combining vowel is a vowel that links the word root to another word root or to a suffix. In most cases, the combining vowel is an O. In the term cardiomyopathy, there are two combining vowels. The first is between the wor word root cardi and the word root my. The second is between the word root my and the suffix pathy. Cardiomyopathy is disease of the heart muscle. As you saw in our examples, the word root is the foundation of a term, and it gives you a sense of the term's meaning. In many cases, the word root refers to a body system or body part. For example, cardi means heart. In other cases, the word root describes an action. The root cis, for example, means to cut. Some medical terms, such as osteoarthritis, may have more than one word root. Osti and arthra are the word roots in this term. There is also a combining vowel o and the suffix itis. Not every medical term has a word root, however. For example, hyper is a prefix that means excessive, and trophy is a suffix that means development. These two word root parts can be combined to make the term hypertrophy which means excessive development. Another word part, the combining vowel, makes it easier to pronounce long medical terms. In most cases, the combining vowel is an O, but it can also be an I or an A. The combining vowel is used between certain word parts in certain situations. Specifically, you will find the combining vowel between two word roots in between a word root and a suffix that begins with a consonant. To decide whether to use a combining vowel between a word root and a suffix, look at the suffix first. If the suffix begins with a vowel, the combining vowel is not used. For example, when combining the word root arthur with the suffix itis, we say arthritis without the combining vowel, not arthroitis with the, the combining vowel. When the suffix begins with a consonant, on the other hand, a combining vowel is used. When combining the word root arthra 
with the suffix scope, we say arthroscope with the combining vowel, not arthroscope without the combining vowel. Combining vowels are typically used between two word roots, even if the second word root begins with a vowel. For example, we say gastroenteritis with the combining vowel, not gastroenteritis without the combining vowel. When writing a word root by itself, the combining form is typically used. The combining form is the word root plus the combining vowel, and it is written as the word root followed by a forward slash followed by the combining vowel. For example, cardi slash o, arthur slash o, gastro slash o. This screen and the two that follow it introduce some common combining forms. Bio means life. Carcino means cancer. Cardio means heart. Chemo refers to chemical. Siso or sizo means to cut. Dermato refers to the skin. Entero refers to the small intestine and gastro is about the stomach. Typically during a lecture, I will introduce the specific word lists and what they might be trying to show you. I might read the first slide of a lecture and on subsequent slides, I may read you the medical term itself, but not mention exactly what the definition is as it'll be printed on the slide for you period. This will save a little bit of time in the lecture, but also it is most important for you to hear the correct pronunciation of the medical terminology itself here. So make sure that you are paying attention to not only the pronunciation, but also the spelling. Also what form we're looking at, if it's a root word, a prefix, suffix, or a combining form, and then lastly, the actual meaning. Gynaco, hemato, immuno, laryngo or laryngo, nephro, neuro, ophthalmo, oto or auto, patho, pulmono, rhino. To remember that rhino means nose, it may help to think of the horn on a rhinoceros's nose. A prefix is a word part that is added to the beginning of a term. The prefix may describe the location of an organ. For example, the prefix sub means below. The prefix can also describe the number of parts. For example, the prefix mono means one. Finally, the prefix may tell us time, as in frequency. The prefix post, for example, means after. While many medical terms do have a prefix, not all of them have a prefix. When a prefix is written by itself, it is followed by a hyphen. For example, intra, hyphen, hyper, hyphen, multi, hyphen. The next few slides list some common prefixes and their definitions. These are very important to learn as you will see them over and over again. For this first slide, I'll read out the prefix and its corresponding definition. On subsequent slides, I'll just read out the prefix so you can focus in on its pronunciation. A or A ah, without an without, anti or anti, against, auto, self, Brady, slow, de or d, without. Dis means painful, difficult, or abnormal. An example of the term using the prefix dis is dyspnea, the medical term means difficulty breathing. 
Indo. Epi. U. X. Extra. Hetero means different. An example of a medical term using the prefix hetero is heterograft. This medical term means a skin graft from another species. Homo. Hyper. Hypo. In. Inter. Intra. Macro. Micro. Neo. An example of a medical term using the prefix neo, which means new, is neonatology. The medical term means study of the newborn. Para. Per. Peri. Post. Pre. Pro. Pseudo. An example of a medical term using the prefix pseudo, which means false, is pseudosiasis. Pseudosiasis means false pregnancy. Re, retro, sub. Tacky, trans, ultra, un. The number prefixes are as follows. By equals two. Hemi refers to half. An example of a medical term using the prefix hemi is hemiplegia, which means paralysis on one half, either the right or the left side of the body. Mono is one. Multi, many. Nully, none. Pan, all. Poly, many. Quadri, four. Semi, partial or half. Tetra, four. Tri, three. A suffix is found at the end of a term and adds meaning. For example, some suffixes refer to a condition. The suffix alja is such a suffix, and it means pain. Other suffixes describe a disease. The suffix itis is an example of this, and it refers to inflammation. A suffix may also give information about a procedure. The suffix ectomy, for example, means surgical removal. All medical terms must include a suffix. It is the only mandatory word part. This is the one rule of medical terminology that can never be broken. Anytime a suffix is written by itself, it is preceded by a hyphen, as you can see in these examples, hyphen logi, hyphen sclerosis, hyphen site. The next few slides list some common suffixes. Alja, seal, site, dynia, ectasis, or ectasis, gen, genic. Ia, Iasis, Ism, Itis means inflammation. An example of a medical term using the suffix itis is esophagitis. This means inflammation of the esophagus. Logist, Logi. Lytic, Malaysia meaning abnormal softening. An example of a medical term using the suffix Malaysia is chondromalacia. This medical term means abnormal cartilage softening. Megaly, oma, opsy, osis, pathy. Plasm, plegia, Ptosis, Raj, Raja, Rhea, Rexis, which means rupture. An example of a medical term using the suffix Rexis is Historexis. This term means ruptured uterus. 
sclerosis. Stenosis, therapy, trophy. Some suffixes are used to change a word root into a complete word. These suffixes share a single meaning, pertaining to. The new word created by combining these adjective suffixes with a root can then be used to modify another word. Let's look at an example of how adjective suffixes work. To state that a patient has an ulcer in his or her stomach, the root gastro, which means stomach, is combined with the suffix ic, which means pertaining to. This creates the word gastric, which means pertaining to the stomach. If you place the word gastric in front of the word ulcer, you have gastric ulcer, which means an ulcer found in the stomach. Here is a list of adjective suffixes. Ac, al, an, ar, ari, attic, eel, eic, ick, ickle, ill, ein, eor, nick, ori, os, us, and tick. You might be thinking to yourself, well, I don't agree with the pronunciation of the suffixes that he's making. Well, it could be that when we add these suffixes on to the end of words, often the combination of the different word parts changes the flow of how we say a word and ultimately how we may pronounce particular parts. So at this point, don't try to focus too much on how a suffix, for example, may be pronounced when it's just sitting on a page with a hyphen in front of it. Pay more attention to how it would be pronounced when it's added onto a word to create uh, further complex layers of meaning. That's really our aim here. Still other suffixes indicate surgical procedures. These suffixes include the following. Synthesis, ectomy, ostomy, otomy, pexy, plasty, raphy, tome. There are also suffixes that indicate procedures or instruments. They include gram, graphy, meter, metry, scope, scopic, Scopy. Now that you know the different word parts, some examples of those word parts and the rules about combining word parts, you can begin building medical terms. Word building involves putting together two or more word parts to make a variety of new terms. To begin building medical terms, you must know the meanings of the word parts and understand how to choose the parts that convey the right meaning. While doing so, you must remember the rules related to the location of each word part. Let's look at building a word. Suppose you have the prefix hypo, which means below or under. Next, you have the combining form dermo, which means skin. Finally, you have the adjective suffix ic, which means pertaining to. When you combine these three word parts, they form the medical term hypodermic, which means pertaining to under the skin. Once you understand word building, you will be able to both build and interpret medical terms. For example, let's look at the medical term gastroenterology. The first thing you need to do to interpret this term is to divide it into its word parts, as shown on the slide. Now that you have divided gastroenterology into its word parts, Let's define them. Gastro, stomach. O is a combining vowel. Enter means small intestine. O again is a combining vowel. And logi means study of. When you combine the meanings of the word parts to create a definition, you begin with the suffix and then move to the beginning of the term. In this case, you get the study of the stomach and the small intestine. 
Now let's discuss the pronunciation of medical terms. The way that a medical term is pronounced differs depending on where the person using the term was born and where they were educated. For example, some people say centimeter and others will say centimeter. The key thing to remember is that no matter how a medical term is pronounced, it must always be spelled the same way. When someone's pronunciation leaves you in doubt, ask for the spelling. To help you learn pronunciation of new terms, look for words in your book that are in boldface type, followed by a phonetic spelling in parentheses. In these phonetic spellings, the stressed syllable is capitalized, as shown in the example on the slide using the word pericarditis. If you are working through these lectures without a book, there are many options online nowadays where you can go find a term, see what it means, and often there is a little arrow that you can click that will play for you the pronunciation of that particular term. Remember, there is only one correct way to spell a medical term. Changing even one letter can change the meaning of the entire item. For example, the word abduction means moving away. If you change that B to a D, you get adduction, which means moving toward. In another example, the word ilium with an E means small intestine. If you change the E to an I, you get the term for the hip bone. The spelling process is complicated by several series of letters that sound the same but are spelled differently. For example, two series of letters sound like psi, P-S-Y as in psychiatry, and C-Y as in cytology. Similarly, two series of the letters sound like dis, D-Y-S as in dyspepsia, and D-I-S as in dislocation. Many medical terms originate from Greek and Latin words. As a result, some singular and plural endings in medical terms are very different from those seen in the English language. Latin and Greek rules for making terms plural differ from English rules. For example, the plural of atrium is atria. Some medical terms, however, do follow the English rules for plurals. For example, the plural of ventricle is ventricles. We will spend a few minutes reviewing the general rules for plurals. There are many rules and they are diverse, so it's a good idea to do some further review on your own. For words ending in A, add an E to the end of the word. Therefore, vertebra becomes vertebrae. For those words ending in ax, change the x to a c and add an es. Therefore, thorax becomes thoraces. For words ending in x or ix, the ending becomes ices. The appendix becomes appendices. For words ending in is, change the is to es, so metastasis becomes metastases. For those ending in ma, add ta to the end of the word. For example, sarcoma is sarcomata when made plural. For words ending in nx, the x becomes g and you add an ES. Therefore, phalanx becomes phalanges. For words ending in ON, the ON is dropped and an A is added. For example, ganglion changes to ganglia. For words ending in UM, the UM is dropped and an A is added. This makes ovum into ova. For those words ending in US, the US is dropped 
and we add an I. For example, nucleus becomes nuclei. And for words ending in Y, the English rule is followed. We change the Y to an I and add ES. Therefore, we get from biopsy, biopsies. Abbreviations are commonly used in medical fields to save time, but they can be confusing. Anytime that you are worried about confusion related to an abbreviation, you should spell out the term. In fact, this confusion can be deadly at times, so some facilities have even made a list of approved abbreviations. Other abbreviations can't be used. When using abbreviations, you must adhere to this list. The most important thing to remember, however, is that you must never use your own abbreviations. Congratulations, you've reached the end of the lecture. Be sure to watch any additional lectures on this topic that may follow. And of course, you are able to return to this lecture anytime you may need a refresher. Until then, thanks for watching.